Topping today's news, Prime Minister Davis Torres Angliston, where phase two of the government's crime-fighting initiative was launched. The government looking to revolutionize local government. Opposition leader gives his opinion on the Integrity Act. And Amazon says consumers in the Bahamas can access free shipping. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It's definitely a pleasure to have you join us. The second phase of the Davis administration's fight against crime, the strategy which is called Clear, Hold and Build, is making significant strides. Prime Minister Philip Davis, as well as the Member of Parliament for Angliston, Glennis Hannah Martin, assessed the community yesterday with the Prime Minister expressing his thoughts on the multi-agency initiative as things are progressing within the Angliston community. Well, the joy that this brings me is is overwhelming because we have to start somewhere and all of the initiatives that we have been uh, engaged in and putting out there is all designed to uplift our people to bring dignity self-respect self-confidence and a reset in their mind as to how they should coexist in communities coexisting with overgrown overgrown lots coexisting with garbage coexisting uh, with derelict vehicles only breeds um, antisocial behavior and of course becomes venues for criminal activities. Hannah Martin shared some of the plans that are ahead for the continuous progress of the clear hold and build strategy which has been launched in her constituency. And this particular program which is clear hold build began with as you would have heard from ASP Tinder with the clearing of lots, removal of debris, old cars and all of these things that people are coexisting with every day, which ha affects your psyche. So we, we, we've been looking at clearing the lots, as she said, moving the vehicles. We're looking at street lighting. We're looking at um, speed bumps. So people who don't live here don't come speeding through. In recent reports, 25 lots have been cleared in the area, which has led to a decrease in places to hide illegal weapons. And as a result, the number of gunshots recorded by police shot spotter technology has decreased in the Angliston area since the initiative began. According to Clay Sweeting, the Minister of Works and Family Island Affairs, it is a good time to be a local government official or any part of local government, and it's a good time to be a family islander as well. Sweeting was making a statement prior to the laying of the new Local Government Bill 2024, which the Davis administration believes will revolutionize the local government system. He said after some regression within local government, the new bill will change that in keeping with the Davis administration's blueprint for change. Madam Speaker, the ninth charter in this government's blueprint for change speaks to family island development in relation to local government specific objectives which include the further decentralization, decision making and putting power in the hands of communities through local government. Increasing the budget for the local government councils, empowering local government bodies to have revenue raising powers and to share jurisdiction over local affairs and community management and development. There are 33 local government districts throughout the country, Mr. Sweeting said. After wide consultation, many of the concerns expressed by various local government districts have been met. Over time, locally elected bodies have seen the responsibility stripped away, slowly, whether by policy or by subsequent amendments to legislation or even new legislation. Those powers will be restored, Madam Speaker, particularly with building control, road traffic, town planning, port, hotel licensing, and in fact, some statutory powers have been expanded. Madam Speaker, revenue raising powers is also a major thrust of the bill. For decades, local authorities have pleaded with successive governments to be given the legal authority to raise revenue. Within this bill, they will be in a position to legally receive funds and donations and to levy fees or taxes for the use of public spaces. These fees or taxes will be prescribed by the minister and all funds will be placed in an account to be used for the further development of local communities. These funds are subject to financial regulations to ensure transparency and accountability. Mr. Sweeting said fiscal responsibility in local government will be a key focus of the new bill, ensuring that both the government and the people receive value for money. He noted that local governments will also work hand-in-hand -hand with local government authority. 
FNM leader Michael Pintard was asked about the significance of the Integrity Act being brought to light by Matt Albury, who is in charge of Organization for Responsible Government, or ORG. The Integrity Act is aimed at discouraging corruption. Pintard had this to say. It's something uh, that we have had discussions with, um, with others who have gone down that path in, in the region. And um, quite frankly, we believe it would be very helpful in terms of us improving governance in the country. Unfortunately, politics often takes priority over governance and, and, and we need to make an adjustment in that area. So again, what, what he has said, I think, is in step with what many countries are seeking to do, not just in the region, but globally. Pintard was also asked to give his thoughts on Donald Trump being re-elected as the U.S. president and what a Trump administration could possibly mean for the Bahamas. The Bahamas is prepared to work with all countries, uh, particularly in our, in our region, um, and then of course to work with the uh, U.S. that is the main contributor to our economy. And so it is our hope um, that the U.S. is going to work within the interests of small island states uh, that, that they are going to assist in terms of doing their part in the global community to mitigate against the damages of climate change. Um, and unfortunately, they have not uh, been as vigorous in their work in international agencies in helping in that regard. And uh, we are hopeful that they will make an adjustment there. We also, we also believe that the Bahamas has been treated unfairly based on our income level. Pintard says the Bahamas has always had a close relationship with the United States and it is their hope that it will continue and be strengthened. And finally in this segment, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper hosted his parliamentary colleagues to an open house tour of the Tourism Developments Incubator titled Sun, Sand and Souvenirs. We are seeking to advance behavioral entrepreneurship and empowerment and we wanted them to have an appreciation for the fact that we're not just talking the talk, we're walking the walk. And secondly, uh, we wanted to demonstrate to them that we are making progress as it relates to the proper deployment of the tourism level. As you would be aware, we passed legislation uh, allocating some of the uh, levy towards uh, these incubation centers. It's a two dollar per passenger levy and we hope to be able to deploy that uh, into facilities like this. Cooper also says that there will be incubation centers on the islands of Exuma and Grand Bahama as well. The Minister for Grand Bahama has announced that we are going to, to launch the the incubation center on the Royal, to Royal Palm Towers on the Mall Drive uh, real soon. The, the property has been identified uh, and I believe we are completing the paperwork and the designs and we expect that to happen soon. Uh, we are going to go to Exuma next uh, where we have a, a shortage of, of buildings available so we're contemplating how we can, can get that project going. Uh, but certainly this is only the beginning in Nassau, so importantly, uh, tourists complain about not enough to see and do and buy, and therefore we are doing something about it we hope to be able to build out in a space nearby a, a, an incubation center, uh, perhaps uh, call something different, but sun, sand, and souvenirs is only the beginning of a, a massive space that we are going to convert, and we are excited about that possibility. Cooper said his ministry is always seeking to attract new foreign direct investors to Bahamian shores and they're looking to see how they can get as many of them out of the pipeline. They've got about $10 billion in investments in the pipeline and they're looking to get some of those projects on the way. And uh, you're listening to JCN News. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.